Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussion Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this personal experience from spirits is Steward and Spirits Who Study Jesus and Mary, during which Mary channels Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old, who talks with Jesus for the first time. But Stuart is offended by Jesus' comments, and Jesus terminates the conversation to give Stuart time to work through his emotional response. This session was recorded on the 6th of March, 2018, from 12.30 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello, everyone. Myself and Mary are here today. Uh, hello, darling. How are hey, you? Hey, babe. You're sporting this beautiful, gorgeous haircut. <laughs> I'm surprised if anyone might recognise me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> First time some of you have seen me with short hair for the entire time you've known me, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm liking it though, so it's probably going to stay. <laughs> it's good in the summer. Yeah, it's great in the summer. But anyway, we're here, we're going to do, be doing some more channeling today, um, and uh, we're a bit unsure about what's going to happen in this next channeling, but um, there's some spirits who want to talk to us about the experiment of. Uh, Jesus and Mary and 12 others coming to the planet and uh, sit to talk to us about how the experiment is going. And we don't know whether we will actually finish up producing this video or not, but uh, we'll see what happens with our discussion. And so uh, it's been, you know, it's a discussion that uh, has been hanging around us for a long time, uh, where, we've, where Mary's probably been fairly unwilling to channel about it. So yeah. we'll see how we go with this particular channeling. So the first thing I should say is probably that there are a lot, I think there are a lot of spirits around observing us, a lot of different groups of spirits. Mm. So one group that... So sometimes we feel under the spotlight a bit. <laughs> Often. <laughs> <laughs> and w whether they are critically watching <laughs> which is often the case yeah, or curiously watching or supportively watching <laughs> yeah there's a lot yes I, I often feel that uh, but this group today feels to me to be more from the scientific watchers so <laughs> Critically watches, the critical watches. Yes, not, not, um, <laughs> yes, critical, but not uh, nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but un, uh, unmoved themselves in terms of. Uh, so, not, not uh, people who have found the path to God, no. not people who've, who have received divine love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. So will we have a go at them? Yes, we'll have a go at them. <laughs> <laughs> See what they have to say. See what they have to say. I haven't had any real discussion with them mm. this morning. Just And who knows, we might get to discuss with some who are supportive <laughs> at some other <laughs> at time. At some point. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe the ones who are very critical, uh, very uh, angry at um, other, another point. Mm. I think I hear them quite a lot already. <laughs> yeah, it's probably good to have a discussion with them at some probably. point. Probably, mm. yeah. Okay. Mm. Hello, my name is Stuart. How are you, Stuart? You good? Very well, thank you. That's good. I suppose it's easy to be pretty well when you're up in the spirit. So yeah. far, so good. <laughs> Depending on when you get past the first few spheres, spheres <laughs> after that, it's fairly good, isn't it? Yes. Now, I'm familiar with your terminology mm -hmm. of surrounding spheres. But I'm happy for you to use some of your terminology, if you wish. Okay. Because that, that will help people who are listening to understand the correlation between the two types of terminology. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Hmm. So there's a group, there's a group of us. Mm -hmm. um, it varies in number depending on the time. 
yep. sometimes more more gather together yep. to watch you both. Uh, but there's a core group of around 20 to 25 of us mm -hmm. who are fairly constantly engaged in what I would call critical observation and analysis. And what, what prompted you to do that? Like, obviously, what, what sphere or dimension do you live in the spirit world? Yes, we're in the early parts of what you would call the third sphere. Yeah. And to be honest, what prompted my interest is I was a scientific man on Earth right. in my profession. Yep. I worked in a laboratory and, and was involved in scientific endeavours. And what kind of science were you primarily involved? I was interested in uh, behaviour, mm -hmm. but also how um, medicine and chemicals could affect the behaviour and brains. Right, so you were people. mostly interested in the what, what would be classified now as the, like, things that are, like antidepressants uh yes medi medications medi medication to look after particular emotional mm -hmm. problems yes so do you feel i have one <laughs> no <laughs> that much is clear okay <laughs> there's many people on earth that would probably disagree with you <laughs> although <laughs> yes it, it yes there's often conjecture about your state of mind Yes. We could call it that. Yeah. Amongst the group? Yes. Yes. It's discussions. Yeah. But no, we, we, we cannot diagnose you. <laughs> and we come from various fields here as well, various right. scientific fields. So some of us were biologists. Uh, some of us were what you would call um, sociologists. Mm -hmm. And some of us were more pure chemists mm -hmm. or, or and physicists there mm -hmm. is one among us mm -hmm. uh, so there we but we all share a a love for the scientific ideals if i could say it like that so a love of scientific truth if you like or fact yes scientific fact, fact. Mm -hmm. uh, establishment of fact testing mm -hmm. of fact testing mm -hmm. of theories and the um the garnering of more knowledge, the yes. betterment of the world through knowledge. Yep. Yes. And have all of you been uh, on Earth in the 20th century? Yes. I, well, I myself, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, this is an interesting part of the story. Mm -hmm. I passed away very peacefully mm -hmm. in my home at around the period in which you were born. Right. Yep. And so this... This fascinates me in a little way. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't become aware of you immediately because, as you know, there are various processes that need to be gone through in order to uh, disconnect a person from this the earth-based uh, mm -hmm. experience and begin a new transition. Mm -hmm. And to sort of engage living a life in a new environment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's different laws, there's different uh, abilities mm -hmm. that must be come to be understood. And developed. And developed. Mm -hmm. And different awarenesses, which I was intrigued by. Yeah. Did you, were you, did you believe in God on earth? Yes, I had, well... When you say believe in God, it was a very loose Yes, yep. exactly. Yep. I, I wasn't opposed to <coughs> the existence of God, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't... Uh, practice any particular religion. Faith. Uh, both myself and my wife were raised uh, with some religious background. I, uh, by the time I reached high school, I was no longer interested in any of that, and I wouldn't call my family of origin a particularly. It, it, it's more of a societal expectation at the time, right? Yeah, that. Um, we occasionally observed some religious customs. Yeah. And the country of birth, too? In England. England. I lived in England, yeah. yes. And yes. the country of birth of the others who have been involved in the... Oh. All over? Yes, all over. <laughs> all right. All over. And what uh, got you all together? Like, obviously, common interest, true? Yes, together? common interest in really understanding the... The laws and experiences involved in this life. Mm -hmm. and you, then, you mean in the spirit life? Yes. 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 And then um, over time, we heard, and, and we, were, we were a much larger group, mm -hmm. and then at, at some point we heard of your 
existence on Earth. So how did you hear of that? Um, Can you remember? Well, there's always talk, isn't there? <laughs> when you say always talk, what, what do you mean by that? Well, we're constantly in the in the course of our work, mm. we were constantly, as much as we were able, given our limitations, mm. to travel uh, in the spirit world. So through the first, the first, first sphere, the second sphere, and and third, to and some limited degree, the third. Some among us are able to almost reach fourth, the top of the third. Yes, mm -hmm. from what we understand. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're still <laughs> learning and understanding. So, uh, but we travelled everywhere and we would come together and convene in meetings mm -hmm. uh, of what we had discovered to try and gather data, compare data and compile data. Mm -hmm. And how many originally were in a group before you heard it? Obviously, you said there were more. Yes, thousands. Thousands. Yeah. Thousands. Okay. Thousands. Yeah. And it was almost like a, I can't find the right word for it, but... You know, a group that regularly meets mm -hmm. and to, it's uh, like for a minds, consortium, you could almost say, or a symposium of yes, yeah. of minds, of minds yeah. and ideas. Yeah, and so uh, yes, and then at some point at one of these symposiums, let's mm. call them, someone reported hearing of you. When you say hearing of me, what what did that mean? Like hearing that fourteen people were back on Earth, or yeah. And can you remember the year that this was? Uh... Well, let me just think now. No worries. As you know, the construct of time is it's experienced difficult. differently here. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Uh, and so... So I'm trying to get some kind of correlation between the time on Earth when you were told this and the time you were told it in the spirit world. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I must have passed around 1960. Mm -hmm. thereabouts. Mm -hmm. I I was conceived in 1962. Okay. And born in 1963. Okay. Mm. I would say it took me, well, thinking back, probably five years at least to really sever a connection with the earth. Mm -hmm. And I, once I realized there was a process, I set my mind to it mm -hmm. and, and did what I could. Maybe a thing will help you in terms of the time. What age did you see me the first time you met me or the first time you started observing me? Uh, what age was I? Pre-puberty. Yeah. Um, perhaps you were eight or nine. Yep. So that would Maybe have put it at about you. 1971. Mm. Yes, that, that seems to be about right. Because I started to attend the symposiums mm -hmm. not long after that five-year period where right. I would say, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then at one of those... So you started attending the symposium around 1965 from Earth Pace perspective? Yes, uh, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Thereabouts. It yeah. may have been loosely, 1966. Loosely. Yes. Yeah. And then in 1971, five years afterwards, yes. your symposium raised the idea that Jesus was back on Earth. Yes. And he was now this little fellow. Yes. yes. Nine year old. Riding a bicycle. Riding a bicycle in Loxton, South Australia. So, as you can imagine, <laughs> it's there hard was... to believe. It's... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yes, let me, I want to get this right. So, let me remember everything mm -hmm. about that first mention. So, someone had gone somewhere in a higher realm, mm -hmm. in a higher location. So one member of the symposium? Yes. Had left uh, the symposium and gone to another sphere? Yes. Is that what happened? Yes. And then came back so to So the report. symposiums were held mm -hmm. in the first sphere to enable as many people as possible gotcha. with the common so interest to achieve. Obviously, mostly for those with scientific endeavour. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. So we were nice. brought together by a common purpose, which is to understand the the laws and environment and capabilities yes. of the spirit life. Yes. Got you. So when that's right, when we heard now this was a Russian friend, I think, who had visited the fifth sphere, which is far beyond um, where I could 
uh, go then and even now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. had returned and said that they had met a person. They didn't spend long in the fifth sphere, mm -hmm. but they, while there they had met a person who seemed quite knowledgeable, mm -hmm. who had said that certain members of this life had somehow managed to have an experience back on Earth again. Which is uh, something that's unheard of before then. Unheard of. Mm. And that this was in some way distinct or particular mm -hmm. from the experience of what you would call overcloaking or... Mm. Which is yes. what all the re so-called reincarnation experiences are. Yes, mm. yes, a great many of them are just based... Which you've scientifically, I gather you've scientifically analysed that? Well, it's very easy to observe. <laughs> exactly. It's so. very easy to observe the overcloaking and then the subsequent behaviour in the person on earth who, yeah. who then believes that they, that they have had a previous life. Yeah. And it's quite obvious... Yes. Yes, and so it's quite easy. frustrating in some ways as a scientist, isn't it, to look at it and then have it all repeated on Earth in a different way than what it's really happening. Yes, well, it's just a phenomena, isn't it? Well, I mean, we it, watch yes. it and we think, um, well, it's quite peculiar to want to have had a previous life. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and, you know, we just sort of study it dispassionately, mm. if I mm -hmm. could say it that way. Mm. It's Does just your Russian friend remember who the name of the person you talked to? Yeah, no, and I'm not in contact with that man anymore. Okay, well, let's see if we can find them so that we can just find out. So I'm just asking okay. our friends to, to find the Russian man and to bring him to you. So. Yes, here he is. <laughs> Gregor. Gregor, yeah. Hello, Gregor. <laughs> so he's relating mm -hmm. that he met, it was actually an ancestor of his. Right. A woman yeah. from his past, a great, great grandmother mm -hmm. who had obviously had some kind of spiritual nature while on earth. Mm -hmm. And he met her quite by accident, or mm. as, as we know, <laughs> not really by accident, but he hadn't been intending to meet her. Mm. But he visited this realm, found her there, and she told him a great many things that he wasn't sure were true or not mm. um, about the potentials mm. of existence in the spirit life. Um, many things about God that he had not previously heard. Mm and mentioned that some people had uh, returned mm -hmm. to Earth. And Gregor was quite a cynical man on Earth and <laughs> didn't have any religious background yeah. and thought it was kind of convenient that the people who had done this uh, were led by Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's a summary. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Gregor, for mentioning that. To Stuart, so, so but he did mention it at the symposium. There you go. So uh, that would have been pretty strange in yeah. itself, wouldn't it? Yes. Amongst a group of scientific people to mention. Well, we the, one of the premises of our group is mm. that we must be open to ideas. Right. We must be open to new information. So you've got to be. Many of us learnt this while in our. Yes, life, life on, on Earth. Earth. So you sort of got to brainstorm, if you like, and, yes. and let, let it take it you where it there. does. <laughs> yes, because obviously um, some people perceive certain things, but we are, enable, we are able to interpret the actual truth. Mm. Uh, something I knew uh, in my work life on Earth, which has been uh, proven again and again, mm. is that people might use certain language and have a certain perception of their experience. But that uh, language may relate to something that they don't fully understand. Yeah. It, can I make that which clear? Is which is frequent, isn't it? Like yes. Most people on Earth will talk about a CPU when it comes to a computer, but they've got no idea what it is, and how it works, and what it looks like, or any of the other things. <laughs> yes. But, but also, I mean here that some people might say, oh, for example, mm -hmm. many old cultures used to say, you know, 
when you had a head cold that it was some kind of um, issue with the spirit or the some in the air or, yeah. or something and not fully understand the disease process that was occurring. Sure. So what we do at the symposium is that we're very open to whatever language people might mm -hmm. choose to use. And then investigate that more fully to find out scientifically what's actually happening. To discern the truth. Yep. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So that's how it occurred. Now, how did I find Gregor? Oh, you mean just now? Just now, yes. Yes, yes. Well, you used your intention, mm -hmm. which is perceptible to me, mm -hmm. to make a call. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I Who did I call? Gregor. I didn't. Well, no, that's true because you didn't know Gregor, did you? That's right. Yes. Well, obviously, you know someone who knows Gregor. Um, yes, yeah, so what did I do? Well, you, you, you called someone, just as, as, for example, I can call on someone mm -hmm. with my intention and why, my thoughts. Why did the person in the sixth sphere listen to what I was saying and find the person in, in the fifth sphere, or the sixth sphere now Gregor is in, right? Yes. Why did he find him for me? There's a, what I'm suggesting is a whole heap of things you're not seeing going on there. Well, it's we haven't even spoken about what we've observed in you yet. No, no. no. But it is common. It is common for a person on Earth to be able to send a request mm -hmm. for a certain spirit to be around them, and others in the spirit world do assist them with that. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Yep. But that's not what happened to you. <laughs> well, clearly I'm not in the sixth sphere, so yeah. I cannot comment. Yeah, that's no, all right. The, so what I'm, I suppose... I, what I'm, I guess I would like to ask what you're driving at. <laughs> what I'm driving at there is that because of the condition of an individual at a certain location, it's impossible for them to see the full workings of a thing until they're in a different location. Now, you've experienced yes. that. You've experienced that when you're in the first sphere, you couldn't find out specific things that third sphere spirits couldn't find out. Certainly. The problem with the critical scientific analysis is this. You're only going to do what you think you should do based on the condition you're in. Yes, I'm not opposed to that line of reasoning at all. Yes, so, so by the time a person's in the third sphere, they will do something different than they would have done if they were in the first sphere. And that's a lot about what I would classify as awareness or consciousness, isn't it? Like Definitely. You, you, and your awareness, there's a method you've been using to grow your awareness, which is to do with experience. Yes. Gaining as many experiences as possible, but that's and not the only method of awareness. I see. Yes. Yeah, but go on. Okay. The main reason why I would point that out is because the the... The issue is with the issue with scientific and so-called scientific analysis, even on the Earth, as you know, is that a person will only investigate what they're aware of. Yes, we're quite open to that, which is one of the reasons why we have such an open door policy at the symposium when it comes to ideas and reports and but things you, that we hear. Can I point out though that you've been watching me since I was eight years of age? Yes, and yet. There are certain things that you have not engaged personally to become aware of in order to properly critically analyze yes Do you and see what I, i'm saying well let's it, discuss it basically this. i'm talking about the and we'll talk about this more later but basically what i'm trying to suggest to you is that unless you unless you have a connection with god there are certain things you are not going to understand but unless you experiment with that connection with god you're not going to be able to understand what you need to understand from the experiment. So the critical analysis scientifically of, a, of, a, of an issue without there being the development in love is also going to be something that restricts the knowledge that's available. So as long as... You, you do understand I've been watching you for a long time, so I know what you... I understand the principle. Uh -huh. Yes, and what I'm saying to you is you don't understand the principle. 
and I don't mean to be confronting what I mean there well, to say. I think that you wanted to hear what we observed, but now I feel no, no, that you're no, trying to tell me that, that you're not really interested and anything I have to say will, will not be valid. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that you can observe something, but there's a difference between observing it and doing it. And, and I feel that what would benefit you more personally is to try doing some of the things and that would actually help with the critical analysis of the observation. Do you follow where I'm yes, coming from? Yes, I do. So I don't mean to be offensive. <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say is that the fact that, I, that you've been observing and yet not done yourself means that to you it's still just an observation certainly and and that's why mary has been resistive to, <laughs> to talk to you up to now because it just feel it, there's no desire to um, actually do it there's just a desire to observe somebody doing it do you, do you see the difference Anyway, we can I, get on to that later. I see the difference, but I feel that that's my decision. Oh, oh no, I agree totally. It is your decision. I but feel that a... I've come to you in a spirit of just sharing information, yeah, and no, now you're good. trying to get me to do what you think I should do. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to get you to do it. I'm trying to point out that there is a limitation in not doing it. That's all. And Yes, well, as you say, I feel that that's something that we could have explored together and spoken about but yeah but I didn't mean to uh, like offend you but you've obviously now offended I, and that's not my intention at all and you, you should well from observing me for since I was nine you should know that it's very rarely my intention to offend somebody um, and I haven't observed you continuously since you were nine right yeah Okay, well, if you don't want to continue the conversation, that's fine. And we can stop the conversation, but I'd like to continue it. Well, what would you like to know? Well, I would like to go back to the previous openness that you had <laughs> emotionally, and now you feel quite closed emotionally. So um, I don't know if there's much more we can say to each other unless you can just be more relaxed about what I'm saying. I'm relaxed about what you're saying. Yes, well, I'm not really sure what you would like to talk about then. Uh, I understand the principle that so we you have outlined. Let's retrace our conversation. We're up to the point where Gregor came and he informed you that, because um, that's what we were up to, that Gregor came and informed you that, or informed the group, the symposium, that, uh, that he supposedly... Heard. He had heard that Jesus was back on earth again, along with some others. Yes. Um, and, uh, and that was where we finished our conversation. So can we continue from there? Is that all right? <laughs> I don't wish to continue if you, if you feel offended by me, though. But Well, it's just that I feel like you were pushy with me. No, I wasn't coming to you in a spirit of criticism at all. I've, I'm interested in you as a person mm -hmm. and the others. I and wouldn't have dedicated all these years to observing you if I wasn't fascinated and didn't have some degree of, or an extreme degree of respect for you. But I don't understand then why you're so offended by my comment. Because immediately you are starting to tell me that my observations are not valid because I haven't engaged the same process that you engage no, and encourage others not, to engage. I didn't say they were not valid. I said there was an, and again, like it feels to me like now you're putting words into my mouth, but um, I said that you wouldn't have a complete picture of what's going on. 
But this is something that we are aware of. We understand that each each new development and mm -hmm. each new step that we take in this life, mm -hmm. we gain more awareness. It's one of the things that we've studied as a symposium and as individuals our entire spirit life is the capacities that exist within this life. Yes, but I still don't see that you get my point, but it's fine. And we can... No, I understand that you would like for me or and everyone to engage a process with God. And that's no, something that no, I that's personally not... have chosen not to do thus far. I'm that's... not saying that I might not in the future. Stuart, that's not what I said. What I said was that there needs to be an understanding of the limitation of the observation based upon the fact that something is just observed and not actually personally done. If, if it's personally done, the observations now become, as you know, uh, your condition of love grows. Once your condition of love grows, now your observations are more complete. That's all I was saying. Yes, but I cannot live your experience. And so if I'm observing your experience, what is it that you, you, you mean about my progression, do you not? that that would give me a more complete understanding of what I am observing? Of course. Yes. Of course it will. And as I mentioned, I'm not opposed to that truth. But you're offended by my saying it, which would tend to indicate you are opposed. No, I'm, I'm offended <laughs> by the immediate... Uh, immediately that I start to tell you something about what I have observed, you immediately wish to tell me the problem with what I have observed. Now, if I took that approach to all of my research, I would never gain new knowledge or learn new things because each piece of knowledge is a stepping stone to the next piece of knowledge. No, that wasn't my intention. My intention was to talk about how not engaging a certain way of process that will give you more information limits your information. And that appears to be what you're offended about. Well, perhaps you could explain to me more what you mean. Um, you may or may not be aware yet that if... That, well, you know, you know about the spirit body and the physical body, obviously. You know the physical body is a, is a body of its own and the spirit body is another, another body. Yes. And you've heard about the soul. Yes. Because I've talked about it. Yes. But you've not observed it. No, but your very existence and some of the things that we observe within you yep. give us... Tend to indicate its existence. Yes. Yes. No, I understand that. The soul development limits your capacity to understand more. Yes. That applies to everybody. It's not just to you or I. No. It's to everybody. Yes. And also your soul development limits the, the experience you can have to a certain point. You've heard that from me physically. I've talked about it. You've obviously observed me talking about it in seminars and so forth. But we see this as well. This is obvious. Then the question becomes, that, that's why I asked the question, because the question then becomes, if you observe it and it's obvious, why not do it? Why not do what? We are developing our soul. No, why not develop your soul with God? That's an individual choice. I know, I know it's an individual choice. I'm asking if you observe that it's, that it's beneficial and yet you don't do it. Well, no, we understand at, from yourself, in fact, but also we understand through our experience that it is possible to develop the soul without a connection to God. Of course, to a certain point. Yes. Yes. And we are very far from that point at yes, this point. Yes, but can I point out to you that you don't believe that it's to a certain point. That is your belief, is it not? Your belief is that there has to be a scientific explanation that is not about God, that allows for a person to progress to the point where they can return back to Earth, which is unheard of. No. I would not say that about me. I would not say that I am opposed to the idea. In fact, I'm very open and interested in the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Is it in fact your relationship with God that has enabled you to have this experience? And in fact, the evidence seem the, the not evidence, 
the analysis of the data. the data would tend to indicate that that is the case. Because you are clearly a person, and everyone we speak to here who, who has met you, uh, and also through our own experiences on Earth, clearly a person who rated God as, uh, as a very high priority in your life and ex- purported to experience a very strong and close connection to God. Now, obviously, you are one of very, very, very few people who are experiencing a certain way of existing that we haven't, we ha- none of us have ever observed in anyone else. So it does make logical sense that it is a relationship with God that has enabled that process to occur. I personally do not wish to have the experience that you're having. And so I um, understand... When you say the experience I'm having, you mean the earth-based experience yes. I'm having. But, but this is what I'm saying to you, you're not aware of. The bit that was in between, the bit that's in between where, you know, the second or third sphere and the celestial heavens and now, all you're seeing is now. You can't, you have not observed my experience in the celestial heavens. No. And you don't know how beautiful it is. No. And you don't believe it. Well, I'm, I feel so pleasantly diverted in my life right now. That's okay. I'm no, 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 I'm just it. pointing out a truth. You don't believe it. Is that not true? Don't believe what? You don't believe there is such a thing as a celestial heavens that can cannot be obtained without having a relationship with God. You believe there is some scientific way of getting there that's separate to God. No, I do not. I do not have an opinion on that, and I feel that from everything that I have learned, mm-hmm. that any progress with God must also be scientific. Of course. Well, yes, that's that's what I think, of course. Yes. Everything I've learned would indicate that. Yes, and what I'm suggesting is that you're, you, in your soul, have yet to make a transition that would allow for the accurate experience or analysis of what you're observing. Yes, so and I that's guess okay. why I'm offended is this. Yep. Because I feel that I've come to you in the spirit of science and good in a good-natured way. Mm-hmm. I've been very open about my position in the spirit world, mm-hmm. that I am in this third sphere condition. Mm-hmm. And I have made it very clear that I'm aware that there is much more progress to be had. And yet you're, one of the first things that you want to say to me is that I mustn't... I cannot know everything because I am not. I haven't observed you in the spirit world or the celestial heavens, and I'm not there yet. And I think, well, bravo, goody for you. That's a fine. I know that. Why do you have to tell me that? Because it's very important for your analysis. But I f- feel I've made it clear that I am aware that there is a limit to my awareness and my powers of observation based upon my development. I've been very open about that. But you don't know how that awareness affects you? No, because that is a part of... I'm I'm sorry, I've come here at your invitation. (laughs) I'm very aware that I do not know everything. As I said earlier, all knowledge is built on prior knowledge, and when we reach new knowledge, we understand the insignificance of the prior knowledge. You are very upset. I am. You are very upset, and honestly, we're probably not going to get very far while you're so upset. No, because I feel you're not interested in hearing about what I have to say. You immediately want to tell me the problems with what I'm about to say. If I was not interested in what you had to say, I I would not have engaged the conversation, right? So I don't understand, like, I feel what you're not seeing here is the amount of emotional intensity inside of yourself about the subject of God and your own resistance to it. And and that is going to have a very large part in your analysis. And and I'm just stating a factual truth here. Well, I feel that it is only through my observation of you mm-hmm. that I've even opened a fraction of a glimmer of personal desire for God at all. And I was hoping to continue to observe you. Frankly, now I don't feel like it because I felt that it would be a... 
obviously if you do as you say you are going to do and if you continue to grow in the way that we are observing then yes I may be more interested in God but right now I'm not and you don't seem to respect that no I respect that I'm pointing out the limits of it that's all and that's where you're offended yes and you don't obviously believe there is a limit and that's okay no this is what is infuriating I don't say I acknowledge that there is very likely potentially a limit because you are renowned for having a relationship with God and now here you are having a unique experience it is very obvious that perhaps God is a very crucial part of this. Stuart, I think you're just getting too angry now. Okay. To have a conversation with you now openly is going to be too difficult because you're so angry. And yes, let's let's reserve our conversation. Let's I'm happy to talk with some of the other group who may be not so angry. Um, well, that will be their decision. OK. I'm very upset because I like to be on good terms with all people. And I really feel that you've been insensitive and uh, anyway, I'm off. No worries. I can't agree that I've been insensitive there. Babe, I hate this. <laughs> it's okay, baby. I hate it. He's just got some emotions about <laughs> having something pointed out to him. <laughs> that he, he still hasn't got the point of what I was trying to point out to him, but that's fine. <laughs> What were you trying to point out to him? That, that the, there's limits to the critical analysis because of development. And if he had engaged a relationship with God and done the analysis, there would be some of the issues would be quite clear because of the soul development mm. from engaging relationship with God allows you to understand things you couldn't understand through your intellectual analysis. Yeah. But you don't, I don't get to say that because he's already offended yeah and and that's to do with his condition of love as to why he's so offended like yeah. so i think you're right he has a well i didn't mean to offend him yeah. but, but he's obviously taken offense and now he's not even probably going to be a member of the group because he's so offended. <laughs> he didn't feel like it <laughs> but anyway he but, might he might have a feeling about it and work through the issue but yeah. that, that's a bit sad because i feel that at the start of the conversation he was quite open he was so enthusiastic as to soon talk as to I, you yeah as soon as i said that he's he's really offended <laughs> well he felt like you you were just from what i felt from him he felt like you were trying to invalidate everything that he was about to say not at all and that's that's why he felt so upset because he felt all. like he was very humble about the fact that he knew that he's, but he's not humble about the fact because he wouldn't have got so angry otherwise yeah. So he's not humble. Yeah. So let's, like, I feel like that's oh, quite obvious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to have that argument with you. You know, I, I feel like um, he's gone. So that's his decision. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he obviously has some feelings. The feeling I felt from him strongly was like, he was like he was working up courage and almost through observing you, it was like he was trying to build a case for God almost to help him overcome some, obviously I'm, some serious emotions. This is what I was trying to say to him, you see. You can't build a case for God intellectually. You've got to go through the experience emotionally. He's yeah. unwilling to go through the experience emotionally. Yeah. And as soon as I point that out to him, he's upset with me, which is, yeah. demonstrates his unwillingness to go through it emotionally. Yeah. So, he, And this is what I see in many people intellectually they try to build up a case for them to engage god emotionally when all they have to do is engage god emotionally and then they'll have a relationship and be able to work through the issues easy enough do, yeah, you, do you know what i mean definitely but there in many people i speak to who are intellectual they they want all this evidence and everything they question question mm. question for years and years and years he, he's done obviously well I'm, how 50, many years? I'm 55 yeah. and he he met me first when i was eight mm. so He's done 47 years of analysis of my life yeah. and yet still has not decided, you know, understood the one thing, which is if you engage this relationship with God, your, your, your questions need, will probably stop because you actually have the actual answers. But or, I still don't see any problem with the observation. Does yeah. that make sense? The, 
the critical analysis, the observation is all good. Mm. I don't have any problem with that. What, I have, what I'm raising with him is that if after 47 years of observing my life, mm. he still does not want to have a relationship with God, then it's quite obvious that he doesn't see the benefits of relationship with God. That's all I'm trying to state. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, isn't it? Like, um, it's almost, I, I get what you're saying now about he's making, or what I'm thinking, maybe it's not what you're saying, he's making observations continually mm-hmm. and like tabulating in them, it feels mm-hmm. like when I feel. Yeah, no, 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 they're doing a scientific re- method on them. Yeah. But he hasn't had this idea that, I can continue do I can have my own relationship with God and continue doing this same thing and it might help me interpret the data better. That's what I was trying to say to him. Yeah. He didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I know he didn't get he it, got, that's why. He felt like you were and trying not, to tell him. He's not going to get it because he wasn't he, he wasn't going to get it because he was so offended mm. by my statement, which is just a statement of truth actually. Yeah. Um, which is something that he does not understand. Yeah. And he, and all I'm trying to do is saying you don't understand this. Yeah. Yeah. From the moment you had said about Gregor, what happened with Gregor, he suddenly felt like you were trying to catch him out. Not at all. And then when you um, From the moment I was asking him whether he could see what actually happened in the chain of events yeah. that actually happened. Because yeah. what actually happened was I asked some of our God, spirit friends to go and find Gregor for me yeah. and get Gregor and bring them to the conversation. Yeah. And he did not observe that. Yeah. Like he knew that I did that, but he yeah. didn't observe the chain of events and who it went to and where it went to. Yeah. And by pointing out that to him, I was hoping to see that if he, if he had developed in God's love, yes. he would have seen that chain yeah, of events. Yeah, I see. Right. That's what you're trying to show. But he felt just like you were trying to make a point about his condition. And, no, and this obviously stuff he's got going on that's probably preventing his relationship with God. Like, exactly. Uh, it's, with it's his about, dad and feeling yeah, humiliated. It's a, state, it's a and, statement of truth. Feeling it is a, there's a link in, in Stuart. There's a link between his worth mm. and a statement of truth. Yeah. He sort of sees a statement of truth as pulling down his worth. I don't see that. Yeah. It's not pulling down his worth. It's just a statement of truth. Yeah. That's all. It's, I, I actually, I think it's him feeling very sad right now because it's sort of, he feels so hurt because, huh, because he feels like, oh, you're someone I really respect and I'm fascinated by you. Um, and now I just feel like you want to make me feel small and no, not good not enough. No, that's not my goal. I know? love, I love yeah. you, Stuart. Yeah. I do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's lovely that you want to come and talk and it's even lovely that you've been observing the whole thing because as you know, there's not many people doing that. <laughs> you know, they hear about it in the spirit world and they go, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Off they go doing their own thing. Right? They don't, they're not interested in proper scientific endeavour. That's why I feel we actually have a lot of common interests. Like mm-hmm. Myself and Stuart, we have a lot of common interests because... And me. I love science. We have a scientific yeah. approach to things and a scientific endeavour. So I don't see... Mm anything wrong with that i'm just saying that there's certain some there's a certain something going on scientifically here that a person is going to be unable to completely analyze without them having some degree of god's love in their soul soul. yeah and i'm not saying that to pull down anybody or anything like that it's just a statement of truth yeah yeah and i don't you know i don't feel i don't feel it's anything more than that he might come back, darling. We'll How's he try feeling? Again. Hey, I can't feel him anymore. He just like felt all this sadness come in, and I felt him what he was feeling, and he's gone mm. away again. Yeah. So. But I'm I'm not his dad. I'm not trying to put him down yeah. and make him feel bad about himself or any of those kind of things. Yeah. I'm just trying to make a statement of truth, and um, actually that will help him. <laughs> yeah. If if he allowed it to. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's all. Mm. Yeah. Often I find this in conversations with people on earth. You've been present with me, haven't you? Many yeah. times when we've had a conversation, people ask me a heap of questions. I have a, then, I, then they start not understanding my answer. And they say, well, you don't understand it because this particular thing is the problem. And then they get very upset. Yeah. It's just a statement of truth about why there's not an understanding of a certain problem. Yeah, like, mm. uh, yeah. Uh, that happens so often because mm. we're all coming. Oh, it's been me as well. I've had that reaction like, mm. oh, you're mm. trying to put me down. Like, because so many of us have 
Well, we've really been raised to, people have tried to <coughs> control our behaviour or make us do what they want by shaming us or humiliating us or something. Uh, and then as soon as someone says the truth to us, if we haven't dealt with that emotion, mm. it can come up, can't it? And I'm trying to ascertain too, when I'm speaking with spe speci specific spirits, what their per personal experience is. Mm. Because at the end of the day, it's very important to understand their personal experience if you're going to you know, be able to understand it, what they're really saying in many cases. Say that last bit again, darling. You, you're trying to understand their personal experience. Well, if, 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 for example, if Stuart could see the communication that I sent to a spirit yep. and then see the spirit communicating with another person yep. and then see that person coming to him, yep. he would then have, then I'd have a much better understanding of what he has personally experienced. Yes, I see. Does that make sense? My feeling from him was that he was aware that that happens, that chain reaction. Only from being told. But he, but could he, he, it seemed to me that he could see the message going, he saw but the he message couldn't going. see where it ends up. No, but he, he can only know because of his experience in doing it in the lower spheres exactly. and his own sphere. Yeah. He doesn't know who it went to, no. who that was, no, he didn't. and so forth and so forth. And, yeah. and this is like it's important to know yeah otherwise you know how how do you engage the whole process do you know yes. what i mean yeah so a true scientific endeavor requires that you actually understand the limits of your ability to analyze what's going on and to not use hearsay or your personal experience mm. to judge the matter that's now just happened yes and and that's not what i observe <laughs> going on yeah. you know around me when i see people so-called scientists yeah. doing scientific things yes and uh and i feel that's a problem yeah because uh, th that demonstrates a large amount of a lack of awareness and and it's and it's for this reason that oftentimes on earth it's the dreamers mm -hmm. who make the first scientific breakthroughs and then the science takes over yeah no you know if you compare if you compare so, you know the per first people developing the airplane you know it was the dreamers yeah. who made the breakthroughs yeah because they're the ones with the passion yeah and then the others come along and did the scientific analysis of the whole thing <laughs> yeah and they weren't bound by any, um, well, I see that though, that they were engaged in a very scientific process. It was just trial it, fix it, trial it, improve it, trial it, try again, try, try, try. It wasn't and just that. It was also that they were in passion, which yes. means they're in their soul. And the soul now has the ability to understand things that the mind yeah. is incapable of grasping while it doesn't have the background or the information available to it. And also receive inspiration. That's right. And also <clears throat> just a willingness. That passion makes you try things that just let's try whatever. We're yeah. not caught up in our status of looking stupid, like exactly, how we exactly. might look stupid. Exactly. Let's just do whatever. Like, let's try anything to exactly. try and get this done. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's why it often is the dreamers who end up with the information mm. first and, and the an analyzers only get the data afterwards. Yes. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Yeah. Are there any of the others in the group who wanted to talk or they were just they were just sitting back there and <laughs> I'll just see. Or I'm happy for my brother Stuart to come back if he wants to. No, I think we're spent for today. I think, yeah. I, I think Stuart might come back, but I, yeah. He was obviously the one who was most willing to come forward in the first place. Mm. Um, mm. I feel he's the biggest, you know, he's the leader of the group. Mm. You know, he's the biggest fan. He's the biggest, like, let's figure it out. Mm. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a shame, hey? Mm. But he might work through it come mm. back we'll try again yeah, we've got a couple now today mm. that we can follow up can't we like mm. with a man and his project and mm. then a Mantu, sorry and his project and then um mm. stuart might come and talk to us mm. i'd really like to hear what he sees so would i i'm, I'm yeah. quite disappointed <laughs> <laughs> that uh he was so offended by yeah. my statements mm. yeah but it's anyway. a shame we'll i find that again. often happens on earth too you enter these sort of 
discussions with people on earth and then they just get, I don't know, offended with something you've said and, and then all of a sudden what could have been is now gone. Yeah, I find that a lot too. Like I really, I really love people and want to talk to people no matter what their experience and connect with them. And mm. then, uh, you know, very often there's just one thing that I say or do that is, you know, obviously brings up something for them or they misinterpret or mm. it just confronts them with something they don't want to hear. And then that's it. And I often feel like, oh, could you come back? We can talk about it more if you want. Like, you know, I can explain what I meant, but uh, mm. yeah. 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 All right. Well, we'll just finish this particular recording then. I was saying, saying, saying Ara to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That uh, Stuart was a bit upset there and, and went. And I'm hopeful that he might work through some things and we might get to talk to him. <laughs> he's got some advantage over many of you in that he's observed me since I was eight years of age. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll let that be. Um, thanks, Mary, again for that, and uh, and we'll see you later. <laughs>